In Trimble Access, we're using version 2016.12 currently. There is a Kogo command for compute a point, and there are nine different methods for computing points. There are a few critical settings that we're going to cover before we go into describing each one of these different methods. One of the important settings is under the properties of your job, under Kogo settings, you have to decide if the distances that you're inputting are grid distances, ellipsoidal distances, or ground distances. You also need to decide if the sea level correction for the ellipsoid is going to be applied. Another setting in the job settings, if I go to units, I have a checkbox here whether I'm going to be using quadrant bearings or azimuths. If I select Kogo Compute a Point, you can see again there are nine different methods. We're going to cover each one of these in a separate video. First, it asks for the name of the point that you want to store to compute, the code of the point you want to compute, and which method you want to use. When it comes to the starting point, you have lots of choices. So if I hit the right arrow with the three dot ellipsis, it asks me if I want to do it radially, meaning I'm going to calculate multiple points from one location, or sequentially, like I want to do a meets and bounds description around a property. It also lets me pick the start point from a list already in my current job. I can search for my job. I can also key in a point. Fast fix automatically connects to either your total station or your GNSS receiver and takes a point. Or measure actually takes you to the measure screen, allows you to name the point, and then store it. You may notice that the map selection is grayed out. That is because we have nothing currently selected on the map. If you want, the Kogo calculations can be done graphically by selecting points from the map screen. So you select the start point. Under the azimuth origin, you have four choices. You have grid or zero. You have true north, magnetic north, or you can use the sun. We'll cover the sun in a different video. And then bearing or azimuth, depending on what you have set in your units, it's going to ask you for a bearing. And this is a grid bearing because we have our project unit set to grid. And then it's asking us for the delta azimuth. So if I say I'm starting on point one, and I want to go a bearing of 30 degrees, that says north 30 degrees east. I go down to page two, and here's where you can type in a distance, 356 feet, or I can say I want the distance between 2-3. And as soon as I hit enter, it calculates the distance between 2 and 3. I can also enter a vertical distance, which would be the difference from 1 to the new calculated point. Minus 0.5 would be minus half a foot. The last thing is down at the bottom, you do have an options key. Again, are your distances grid, ellipsoid, or ground? You can change them right here. And if you do know the magnetic declination and you're using a magnetic setting, you can set that here in your Kogo command. As soon as you hit calculate, it shows you the coordinates of the point you want to store. And you can choose whether you want to store it as a latitude longitude, a WGS84, depending on your coordinate system, a local coordinate, a grid coordinate, or just store the raw measurements as azimuth, horizontal, vertical. Be sure you hit store. That concludes with video one on Kogo Computer Point.